I, I thought about your question and I and have a very uh, kind of intuitive uh, feeling towards where it comes from and what is it connected to. So in every awakening and the awakening of which you speak about and what you've experienced, right, is energy is involved, correct? Are you familiar with Ayurvedic terms, with Ayurvedic terminology? Brilliant. Okay. That uh, makes my job that much easier. So uh, if you know that Vata is that which, which is basically the mixture of ether and air, and Pita is the mixture of fire and water, right? But mostly fire. But when people say it's just fire, it's incorrect. Because water can be in a boiled state, and a lot of Pita is there. And Kappa, it's the mixture of earth and water, right? So it's like, you know, in, in the bodily physiology, it's represented as, it represented in the form of a, uh, you know, the air, right? Air, as the breath, as the you know, vitality and functioning of the nervous system, right? As the digestive power, Right? The, the power to digest and assimilate food and all thoughts and impressions. And as this very physiology structure. Okay? All this is, of course, is mo ruled and moved by prana, of which we have spoken before. Right? So, what happens very often is that there is a tremendous reshuffling, tremendous movement of prana. And since Vata, Vata is known as the king of all the doshas, is that element, it's not an element, it's actually dosha, it's imperfection, because it's a mixture of elements. Elements themselves are pure. But soon as they mix together, they become impure. Hence the word dosha, right? Vata, since it is made of ether and air, is the closest to prana, but it's not prana itself, so it's very good to distinguish. When there's a major realignment of pranic flow in the body, which is accompanied by all awakenings, the vata is the first dosha to go out of place. And it's the dosha to watch out. There are some ideal, I'm, I'm dealing with severe cases of spiritual emergency. You know, when people have burned nervous system, you know, that and vata is that which rules the nervous system. So the panic, the panic attacks that of which you speak about are very much the result of the deep disturbance of vata. Does that make sense to you? You see, so the vata, vata rules the nervous system. When vata, when vata is out of balance, we feel anxiety, we feel panic attacks, you know, we feel unsettled, we feel often ungrounded. But it doesn't have to be all of them. It's enough to have one of them, and Vata is present there. So, my advice would be for you to find a way how to balance and bring Vata into balance. It's very important. Because Vata is the king of all the doshas. And why it is the king? Because the Ayurvedic physicians, they you know, by observing the way the body functions, because, because of its mobility, you know, because of its mobility and the proximity to prana, again, as I said. So it can easily create havocs, and because it rules the nervous system, rule, nervous system is everything. For that reason, it's the king of the doshas. And funny enough, va vata is the easiest to deal with, precisely because it's the lightest of the doshas. You see? It is the lightest of the doshas. So, if you have, let's say, an adequate rest, an appropriate food, if you insulate your body with, with the good quality oils, you know, and uh, perhaps go through certain uh, detoxing procedures to get, ac like, accumulated access, ac access of vata, 
Because it could be that. It could be excess of water. It needs to be, you know, the system needs to be purged of the excess of water. You know, that often behind the panic attacks. This is how I feel intuitively, you know, so, I, but if that resonates with you or not, it's another matter. It's a deep-seated disorder, you know, the vata is really, really moved out of place. But I'm going to be uh, speaking a little bit, and not so much from the perspective of that mainstream Ayurveda. Have you heard of these, uh, like, kind of terms, uh, the holes in the in the aura, you know, like yeah, that like kind. The spiritual spiritual no, like that. Um, some people talk about like I don't know how in in the common language they talk about like having holes in one's etherical field in one's aura mm -hmm. because these layers of which we spoke about. Although they are unifying layers that lead us to the ultimately the Ananda Maya Kosha, some of them are there to protect this very individuality. Mm. I have a very different view than mm. most of the teachers I know of on ego and its functioning. But it's not the subject of our gathering today. Our individuality here has a purpose. You know, its consciousness ex itself expresses itself in the variety of its potentialities. So it's unique. It's that creative tension between the drop and the ocean of which I spoke in, at the conference, if you remember, if you attended to the other talk. So the, whenever there is some, let's say, disturbances in the frequencies of these subtle layers, it's like as if insulation is gone, right? It's cold outside, very windy, you're wearing a nice coat, but you have a hole like that at the back right here. It doesn't matter you're wearing this coat, you know, it's like blowing through you. This is what I meant when some people talk about these holes in auric field. But I don't like to call them holes, because they're not holes really. What it is, it's that the frequencies of vibration, it's all in the frequencies. There is a slight dissonance and it brings out, brings out, it, it kind of this, this whole beautiful, let's say, multi-layered vibrating reality, which is you yourself, or, you know, as spirit incarnated in this body. But when there is certain dissonance, certain interference of patterns, it creates what it is known as, you know, psychic attacks, you know, panic attacks. You could be invaded by, you could perceive some entities. I'm not, I'm not saying they exist, they don't exist. You know, like, well, many teachers feel uncomfortable and they dismiss it outright, that it's all, 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 is, all this is awareness of what, what, you know, Tony Parsons would not talk about entities, right? Because you don't exist according to Tony Parsons. Yeah. So it's like the conversation ends there and then. So it's in a way easy. But here I want you to understand and address above all else that which needs to be systematically and holistically healed, full stop. Which means you may need to radically alter certain seemingly simple patterns of which you're not even aware. You know? And when I say the seemingly simple, it could be something that on a physiological level uh, you need to change certain diet, certain things that you're accustomed to eat. You know, you may need to go through a, a period when you, like, let's say, um, almost like on a holistically up upholding diet, because the vata, vata, when it's out of balance, everything you do wrong disbalances it even more. See? So you cannot just carry on and like, okay, you know. It's like you need to reseal, re-insulate your, your system. Re-insulate your system. And since it is all encompassing, 
addressing it on one level addresses another level right you're addressing physical level and it you know it's self reflectory this physiology reflects reflects the way we think right what we eat thoughts come from the food and the provenance of the food but that's okay okay that's very long it's a subject in its own right but this is where you need to look into you know this is where you need what you need to address look into it holistically you know holistically what whatever disturbs vata you know maybe f book a visit to a physician so check your pulse and see because there, there's also the gradations of what vata the types of vata you know where the vata came out of balance you know so that you can address it and vata likes aromatherapy it likes oily baths it likes good quality oils right it likes to be you know insulated you know yeah well it it likes yes it likes to be insulated it likes to be protected so that you know that the period where you just nourish yourself like that you know so you need to have somewhere to rest you know like your when people come out of themselves you know when all this body just explodes when energies come out all the pranas go high wise you know before all this comes into integration again before the hormone production completely is altered and qualitatively new hormones are issued into the body there is a period known as you know realignment you know and it's it could be a very painful period i'm not going to you know i'm not trying to instill any uh, worry in you but so that you're aware that it's very important to address these issues you know so that you don't just just like let it you know and as a result with all this with all this this um, effects of others energy would be less bothersome you know there's a little secret here it's not a secret but like telling you that's a secret so you may be more attentive this physiology is all conglomerate of divine energies literally divine when you experience that you know it you know there's nothing that is profane about this body it's utterly divine you know from tip toes to the top of the head right even on the level of the tissues a particular divinity residing there so whenever you take care of your body whatever you do there are a couple of strong angels beings of light right at the back of your being at all times you know they are your guardians why because you take care of this divinity so they come to to protect to protect the deva the, the devas you know to protect the devatas they have two names, Devas and Devatas, and they're directly related to that of what we spoke about, the aspect of seeing. Because this is purity of experience itself. Seeing, perceiving, you know, all this gamut of perception, as we've established, right, a moment ago, is innocent. Why is it innocent? It is not a human property. It is divine property. So for that reason, when physiology is intact, when physiology is taken care of, then you are invincible. Nobody can come and you know start messing out with your energy field. <laughs>